Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lightweight Java game library 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be doing a bit of terrain collision detection. Funnily enough we've actually already implemented terrain collision detection in the player class. This right here is the terrain collision detection calculation that we did a few episodes ago and we don't need to change this one bit. The only reason why it's not working anymore is that we previously set the terrain height to be zero always. So what we need to do in this video isn't really terrain collision detection, we've already done that, but instead we just need to be able to find the height of the terrain at the player's position. Once we know that, we can put it in here and then the terrain collision detection will work again. So to make it easier for us, we're just going to be doing collision detection for one terrain today, so I'll just delete my other terrain for now. But once you've seen how it's done for one terrain, it should be pretty easy to extend the system to work with multiple terrains. So, the first thing we need in the terrain class, we need a way to store the height of each vertex on the terrain. So we're going to create a table of heights, an array of an array of heights, a float array array. And we're going to set the length of this table to the number of vertices along each side of the terrain. Then, in this part where we calculate the height for each vertex, we're going to just store that quickly into a variable called height, which we can then put straight back in here. But we can also now use that to store into the table of heights. So heights j i equals height. So that will store all of the heights of all of the vertices into that table of heights. And now we're going to create a method that will get the height of the terrain for any given xz coordinate. So we'll give the xz coordinate and it will return the height of the terrain at that point. The first thing we want to do is to convert this world coordinate into uh, a position relative to the terrain. So we're going to create a terrain x and a terrain z coordinate by doing the world coordinate minus the terrain's x and z position in the world. So it now doesn't matter at all where the terrain is in the world because we have the player's position in relation to the terrain. So for any terrain now this point is 0 0 and this bottom right corner is size size where size is the length of one side of the terrain so in this case that's 800. The next thing we're going to do is just to calculate the size of each grid square on the terrain and to do that we just take the size of the terrain and we divide it by the number of grid squares and the number of grid, grid squares is going to be the length of the heights array so that's the number of vertices along one edge minus one and it's heights dot length minus one because as you can see here if the terrain has four vertices along this side of the terrain then it has three actual grid squares along this side so now we're going to find out which grid square this xz coordinate is in. So which grid square, if we're testing for the player, which grid square on the terrain is the player in. And to do that, we do terrain x, or the terrain's coordinate, divided by the grid square size, and we floor the result. So we do that for grid x and then for grid z. It's math.floor terrain z divided by grid square size. For example, if each grid square was 5 long and we were at terrain position 13, 8, then divide this position by the grid square length, which is 5, and floor the result, and you'll see that it shows that we are in grid square 2, 1, which, as you can see, is correct. The next thing that we have to do is to test if this xz position is actually on the terrain. So we're just going to test if this grid x, grid z that we've calculated, if it's actually a valid grid square on the terrain. So we'll check if it's too big, if it's off the edge of the terrain to the right or the bottom. And we'll also test if it's less than zero, which would mean it was to the left of the terrain or above the terrain. And if this is the case, we're just going to return zero as the height. So we now know which grid square the player is in, but now we're going to find out where on the grid square the player is. So we're going to use the modulus operator to find out the distance of the player from the top left corner of the grid square. So we're going to do that to find the x distance and the y distance. Uh, and then we're going to divide these 
by the grid square size, which will give us an x coordinate and a z coordinate between 0 and 1. So if this is the grid square that we're currently in, the top left is 0, 0 and the bottom right is 1, 1. And we've just calculated the xz coordinate of the player in this square, which would be something like this perhaps. Now, as you know, everything is made from triangles in our 3D world, and our terrain is no exception. So each grid square is actually two triangles, like this. So how can we find which triangle the player is on? Well, this line here is the line x equals 1 minus z. Everything on this line will have an x coordinate that is equal to 1 minus the z coordinate. Take this point here for example. This is 0 0.1, 0 0.9. The x coordinate of 0 0.1 is equal to 1 minus the z coordinate of 0 0.9. And it's the same everywhere on this line. On this side of the line, the x coordinate is bigger than 1 minus the z coordinate. And on this side of the line, it's the opposite. So by testing if the x coordinate is greater than 1 minus the z coordinate, we can work out which triangle the player is standing on. So let's put this in the code. Uh, first, before we do, we're going to have a float variable ready to hold the answer when we've got it. So now let's do that uh, if statement. So if the x coordinate is less than or equal to 1 minus the z coordinate, then we know we're in one triangle, else we know we're in the other. So we now know which triangle the player is on, and we know its xz position on the triangle. We also know the height of each point on the triangle because we've stored the heights of all the terrain's vertices at the start of this episode in the heights array. All we need now is to find the height of the triangle at the player's xz position. There are various ways of doing this, I'm sure, but one nice way of doing it that I've always used is barycentric interpolation. I'm not going to explain the maths behind it and I'm not even sure if I fully understand it myself to be honest, but in the maths class you can put this method here, and hopefully I'll have remembered to put a link to a text file containing this method in the description so that you can just copy and paste it in because this would be very annoying to try and copy down. So this method takes in three 3D vectors, which are the three points on the triangle, and also one 2D vector, which is the xz coordinate of the player. And this method will return that all-important height of the triangle at the player's position. So let's now call this method to get that all-important terrain height. So, if we're in this triangle, then the points of the triangle are going to be this. Hopefully you can see why that is. And notice that we're still using the grid square coordinates here. So the top left of the grid square is 0, 0 for x and z, and the bottom right point is 1, 1. So let's put that into the code, and I'm just going to copy and paste it in to save time. And if the player is in the other triangle, then the three triangle points would be like this. Again, hopefully you can see why that is. So again, let's put that into the code and get the height by calling the barycentric method. And that is it! We've now got the height of the terrain, so let's return that from this method. So all we need to do now is to take in the terrain that the player is currently on in the player.move method, and then we can use that method that we just programmed to get the height of the terrain at the player's current xz position. And then we can use that height in the collision detection calculation. So now let's just go into the main game loop and we can sort it all out here by putting the terrain into the player's move method. And if you're doing this with multiple terrains, it's exactly the same, except you have to test first which terrain the player is standing on, so that you can send the player the correct terrain. It should be pretty easy to work out which terrain the player is standing on though, so I'll leave that to you for now, and I might mention it at the start of next episode if needs be. So let's run that and hopefully it should all work nicely and there you go! As you can see the player now collides perfectly and very smoothly with the terrain. And yeah, it all works as it should. So one final thing, you can of course use this method when adding entities into the world now. 
So I generate entities at a random xz position in the world, and then I use our method to find out the terrain's height at that position on the terrain. That way, all of the trees are rendered perfectly onto the terrain instead of in it or above it. So that is it for this week. I hope that you all found it very useful. Next week will be the last tutorial of this year. I'm going to give myself a little bit of time off over Christmas so that I can plan out the multiplayer tutorials, which will start at the beginning of January. If you didn't see yesterday's devlog video, then do give it a watch to see all of the awesome models that people have been making for the game this week. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next time.